Hi, TDF fans. My name is LaChance, and I'm so happy to be able to have this conversation with my dear friend and colleague, Audrey McDonald. Hello, TDF fans, and hello, my dear sister, LaChance. And uh, we are here. We're just going to have a conversation about life, about Black Theater United, about the world, Broadway getting us back open, and I don't know, cheesecake. Let's yep. see what happens. <laughs> Here we go. Let's get started. All right. So tell us about the creation of Black Theater United, Ajara. Who made the first phone call that led to the organization's founding? Well, LaChance, as you and I both know very well, you know, it was right in the midst of the um, fallout and the grief and the um, pain and the horror of the George Floyd murder. Mm -hmm. And um, LaChance had posted something on um, Facebook and um, you and I had been texting about something else anyway. I don't even remember what, I don't know. We go back and forth. I was checking on you because, you, oh, your dad was sick. Right, we were talking a lot because my dad um, contracted COVID and was in a coma for so many days and I had posted his journey and thank God he's still with us, but he's still suffering. But um, we were talking about that. Yeah, I was checking in and seeing that. And um, um, we can talk about it later, but LaShantz and I have girls who are the um, same age. And mm -hmm. so we check in from time to time. So when all of this went down with the George Floyd murder, um, uh, we were texting about that. And then LaShantz made a very passionate sort of Facebook post about where was the Broadway community and how come they hadn't spoken up. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we got on the phone. I called and we just said, we need to talk. We need to figure out something. Do you want to get some of our friends together to just talk about this and see what we can do, how we can encourage people to um, stand up and, 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 and make it at the very least a statement, but more than that, um, really start to work towards actual change. And what can we do? We need to not just sit on the sidelines either. Right. And that we call, I mean, we were, I don't know, from that moment, I think we, there's not really been more than three days where you and I have not been in some sort of contact with each other. I know. would say probably every day. Yeah. <laughs> at least, we at least text, talk. We yeah. have an email exchange. Um, <laughs> because when we started Black Theater United, I mean, we were just, you know, I love that you said that we were just angry and we were like, we, need, we have to do something. We have to do something. And we called on our friends and so grateful that so many people, everyone said yes, everyone showed up and we got on a Zoom. June, was it June 6th was our first Zoom. Yeah. And we've been meeting every single week for the most part. Yeah. Um, since then, every Sunday night we meet and, you know, our different committees meet throughout the week. So it is, it has definitely become, um, for me, it's like, it's, I call it my day job. Um, because Black Theater United, we're, we, we've been so fortunate to be so active and have so many positive uh, experiences come out of what we've all come together to do. And we're still we're still going. So. Yeah. And we're, you know, one of many organizations that have formed or were already formed that have, you know, you know, really been making steps and, and doing what they can and organizing. I mean, it takes um, it takes all hands on deck. That's right. To really um, make substantive, long lasting, you know, permanent change. And um, mm -hmm. so I'm just thrilled that we are one of those organizations out there doing what we can. Yep, our yeah. voice is out there. Okay, so I'll ask the next question. LaShance and I also say that we share a brain. So um, this is actually good that you have us doing a conversation together because we finish, we finish each other's sandwiches and sentences. Okay, <laughs> so stand for change. Um, 
which I'm so excited we were able to do. Yes. And it was thrilling that we were able to get all of us, so many of us together singing on the stage. Um, Lashance, do you want to talk a little bit about how we were able to pull that off? I mean, and, and who we really need to give the kudos to within our BTU founders group, who really, really was the spearheader of that? Yes. So our um, leader, our fearless leader, and who produced the mess out of this was <laughs> Vanessa Williams. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing we should, I just have to say a little bit about Vanessa really quickly. So she's on our Zooms. Every time she's there, she doesn't say much, but she is working. She is taking notes. She is thinking. She has this, this like business mind, this business sense Brilliant. that you don't even think that she has, but then she'll send emails saying, okay, we're doing this stand for change. We have the song. She she made sure that the writers and the producers in the studio, she got all of us in COVID safe environments to record. During COVID, she, stra she staggered all of our, our recordings. She made sure that when it came time to come together, they actually do the video that, we, that everyone was tested. We had strict COVID protocol. But it was the first time that all of us were able to get together and see each other in person for this video shoot since we formed Black Theatre United. So for us, it was it was just it was very emotional to see everyone in person. But it was also impactful for us to to have our own song, which is basically about what who we are as Black Theatre United, standing for a change. Yeah. And and we went out to NJ Pack and shot this incredible video. And um, we're hoping that the video will raise awareness um, for what we're what we are supporting, as well as our mentorship program and the other programs that we're financing right now. So um, this is going to be very powerful and impactful. And it's it's only the founders that are a part of it. We have some pretty fancy founders, so we're fat, we're we're lucky that our founders all came together to produce this incredible incredible moment in our history. And we thank Vanessa for, for pulling it all together. She really did. I like to call Vanessa Williams, Vanessa Encyclopedia. I mean, we, I mean, we've all known each other for decades and right. Vanessa literally saved me at my, my wedding because my, the person who was doing my hair had gotten sick and so they couldn't show up on the day to do my wedding. And, and Vanessa, I called her that morning crying. She's like, it's fine. I'll take care of it. And she had someone there for me in an hour. I mean, oh, she, yeah. she is a brilliant woman, brilliant person, a great friend, a brilliant a producer and she really came together with it came through with this um and more so too one of the original town halls that we had for mm -hmm. um our first town hall that uh, black theater united have and we have some more coming up that we'll be announcing soon um but one of the first uh, guests we had was sherilyn eiffel mm -hmm. um you know the president of the uh, national uh, the president of NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said is you need to use, um, you have to build the scaffolding for change, but you have to use the tools in your toolbox. And we understand that part, one of those tools for us as performers is to perform. We have to use our voice in that way. So it's another one of the reasons that we decided to um, create this video, um, which talks a lot about what we believe in and what we're standing for. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way that Black Theatre United has has created uh, content to raise awareness with the census, created um, uh, sort of uh, creative content to um, raise awareness about voting and voting rights, um, uh, as well as, you know, work that needs to be done within our own industry. So um, mm -hmm. we really took Sherilyn Eiffel's message and advice to heart um, to use everybody that everybody needs to use the, the specific and powerful tools that they have within their own toolbox mm -hmm. uh, to affect change. So, and our unified, uh, uh, let's say the uh, one of the things Arja says that I love. She says together, all of the nineteen founding members of Black Theatre United together, we have is it five hundred years of experience? We're old. Something like that. We're old. We're old. We've been around, but we, but we're taking our combined experience, our combined influence, and we're hoping that it will garner enough interest that people will pay attention to what we're doing in Black Theatre United, and we'll see that it's worth supporting and getting behind, and that some of the causes and our cause to, to which is dismantle systemic racism in theater and beyond, is um and to take into value 
really highlight the value of Black bodies, Black talent, and Black lives. We want people, that awareness to come from us because we think that with our combined influence, people may listen up and listen. So we're hoping that, that our combined impact will really affect change. And then again, with our combined impact, along with all the other organizations that are doing the same way and using right. the strength and the tools within their toolbox. I mean, like we said, this is a, there are many, many roads to the same destination and the destination and the um, goal mm -hmm. is dismantling system, systemic racism. And for us specifically protecting black bodies, black talent, black lives. That's right. Yeah. Okay, here's one for me. Even though Broadway remains closed, Black Theatre United is already having an impact. Yep. Can, can you talk about the Refocus Project, which you're doing with Roundabout Theatre Company? Yes, we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Broadway is closed. Um, and I think in some ways, um, maybe organizations like you know, BTU, you know, BAC, BTC, all these different other organizations have been able to focus a little more on what you're doing because normally a lot of us would be working in shows and, you know, having eight shows a week, two matinees and all that stuff. And our energy would be split in a million different directions. And as the world is starting to open up, everybody's energy is starting to get split in a bunch of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, but because theater was closed and so many, of us, so many of us work in theater, we were able to then focus all our energy on this. And it's easy to get together because everybody was in quarantine and everybody was at home. So it's just like, just hop on the Zoom at eight o'clock, I'll see you there. Yep. Um, so in that sense, um, we've been able to sort of take this time to focus on what we need to focus on so that when we do reopen, um, we reopen certainly with more awareness and, and reopen on the path towards um, change uh, yeah. as far as what goes on within the theatrical community and systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And that happens in a myriad of ways. And one of the ways I think with um, the Roundabout Theater, they've, they've started this uh, program, this, um, this refocus project in which they're starting to focus on um, uh, the works of uh, Black American playwrights, and especially those within um, the 20th century, whose work has not been centered and not been, um, not has had as much um, sort of sunlight mm -hmm. as 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 it should as they should have, mm -hmm. simply because of systemic racism and and the way a lot of um, theater companies have worked in the past and not necessarily spent their time and their energy and their money on uh, Black American playwrights. So. Roundabout Theater is is looking to change that and change their ways. And um, and one of the ways they're doing that is with this particular project where they're really going to take the time um, starting um, as a fundraising event uh, and to raise awareness of uh, Black American playwrights. And then I, I think it will that's the beginning of the project. And then they will focus on them um, by staging more um, Black American playwrights work in yep. the future um, as, as soon as things get open. So. Right. That. Yeah, no, I was going to say that um, they're, they're starting with by a series of readings that they're starting in April, highlighting different Black American playwrights, but they're also starting their season this fall with <laughs> by Alice Childress called Trouble in Mind, directed by Charles Randolph Wright, which is a reading of a play that I did with him a while ago. And he's been, he's, Charles is, is in love with this play. It's a beautiful play, absolutely beautiful play written um, by Alice Childress, and I think it's she. It was written in, and don't quote me, so I'm not going to say the date. But what I understand, it was written in the 40s. This is what I understand. I could be wrong, but um, but yes, it's one of it's one of the pieces that um really does need a platform. And I'm so grateful that that Roundabout Theater has decided to spearhead this series, the Refocus series, and 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 really highlight the works of Black American playwrights because you know. We, we all know that there are so many Black American playwrights that have not been given a platform. We do know of, um, you know, of course, the famous Black American playwrights that we hear about, but there are so many, the unsung heroes that, um, that we all, whose shoulders we all stand on. So um, the roundabout have taking this, uh, making this a, a part of their platform is very important. And as a, those of us at Black Theatre United, we are in full support of it and we're grateful for it. And actually one of our founders, Kenny Leon, will be directing one of the um, streaming uh, plays this spring um, yeah. in, their, in their reading as well. So um, yeah, and uh, hopefully this will be, you know, the beginning of a, a long 
um, and continuous sort of refocusing that's um, it. <laughs> in a way that's necessary. So kudos to the roundabout. Yeah. Both of you played Sarah in ragtime, but at different times. At one point, you were playing Sarah at the exact same time, just <laughs> in different countries. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, is Black Theater United your first theater-related collaboration? And have we ever come close to working together? Um, our first theater-related collaboration. I mean, um, we've known each other forever. We've never worked together though. We, worked we together. did concerts. I remember that time yeah. we did, I think we did a concert together, a fundraiser for something. We've done yeah, that. Like a set thing. But the, yeah. yeah, this may, yeah, we've never worked together. I mean, I remember years ago, like with when we were both doing ragtime. Um uh and you know, and then and then you did it in New York and I did it in New York. We both I remember I mean, this is so interesting. I, I know. Right. So, so many people, I think, you know, in the way that you look at sports and you look at theater and you want to pit people against each other. And I know for a long time, people were trying to pit us against they each were. other. They yep. were. And, and they never would let that happen. Never, never. Never. I mean, it was just like, that's stupid. It's stupid. And we're both, you know, worthy, talented Black women, uh, you know, one of very few Black women in this business. And, in theater. In theater. And so... Yeah. We have always supported each other and lifted each other up, and yeah. we had kids at the same time. Our kids and grew up knowing each other. Yeah, I mean, there was never an occasion or never any reason to be pitted against each other. And I never, I never liked that about how people would do that because yeah. you know there are so few of us black women that have been given, a, a, you know, the platform or the opportunity, the opportunity. Of, you know, that we have been given. So. And worked for. We worked for and earned. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Let's just worked say hard. we worked hard. Yeah, very hard. Right there. But um, I mean, I remember the first time I saw you in Carousel. I'll never forget that. I remember going to see it. It was a matinee. And you were just, it was my first time ever seeing you. And I was like, oh my God, she's amazing. <laughs> you like burst. You like just like this gracious, like burst of energy on stage and oh you know and I loved it because it was this carousel and I wanted to see it but I remember the first time I saw you I was like oh my god I got I gotta get to know her and then the business we got to know each other over and over and over and then we ended up I remember when you were pregnant with Zoe that's when they so okay now we're going off script a little bit but <laughs> I remember they were like okay LaShance is in LA ours is in New York um, I just about to have her baby, LaShance, get over here. We need you to do this period. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when we come in. And then I got pregnant with Zaya or Celia. I got pregnant with one of my kids. Zaya. And it was Zaya. And I had to, then I did it as far as I could, as much yeah. as the dress could cover. Then I left. Yeah, well, I was Celia. But then yeah. the interesting thing, too, is like for me, LaShance, it was like when I was still in Juilliard, mm -hmm. listening I to the original soundtrack of Once on this Island. And I was still dreaming of trying to be on Broadway and like, how am I gonna do it? And I'm in, and I'm in, I'm, I'm singing opera and this isn't what I want to do. And I would sit and listen to you oh. on that album and cry. Oh, I would just yeah. cry. I'd be like, first of all, she's amazing. She's brilliant. She's the star of that show. Oh. And she you were a North Star for me because it was where I wanted to be. Right. And so for you, you were an inspiration for me. You were showing me that it's possible just by doing and succeeding and being brilliant. You were showing, so you were like literally lighting the path and leading the way for me. Wow. And so it was just amazing that 500 years later, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kids are in college. Okay. Kids in college, kids in years college. Later, here we are starting this organization. So, yeah. but yeah. The Dude, we didn't answer that question, but oh, oh it Next question. Next question. Okay. I, I'll ask you this. What shows are on your respective wish list to do together? Okay. That's a good hmm. one. What could we do? We could do. God, so many. Or um, we could have somebody write us something. Yeah. Because, yeah, let's do something new. Yeah. Something provocative. With yeah. two black female leads. The only, black, the only play that I know right now with two black female leads is... Having our say. Wow. We got a little ways to go. And we ain't that old. I mean, we're but, on our way, but we ain't there yet. We ain't there yet. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, when you think about it, 
Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there, there are, I mean, certainly ones that have been done on Broadway already. Um, there's room. There's room. And we're, we're, um, taking, we're taking recommendations. How about that? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> I like that. That's good. Or we could do like an all female version of something. Right. You know, oh, God. You know, all black female version of something. How about that? Ooh. I know. I would love that. Yeah. So, so ride in with your suggestions. Yeah. Okay. The closed TKTS booth in Times Square has become a symbol of the Broadway shutdown. Do you have any fun memories of buying tickets there? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So yes. So I remember that line. Now it's not so long, but I remember that line looping back and forth all around. And when I first hit the streets in New York, I couldn't afford a Broadway show, but I would always go to that TKTS line. And then I learned about the other one with, that was down in the Wall Street district that, you know, if, if the line was too long uptown, you can go downtown and go to that other one and the line wouldn't be so long. But I just remember standing in those lines and waiting to get up. Like I would take the time, get there before the matinee, get in that line and whatever was up there, be able to get a ticket. And it was just, you know, it was just so great for those of us who couldn't spend 150 bucks yeah. for a Broadway show. That TKTS line was a saving grace. It you absolutely know? was oh. and continues to be. I mean, I mean, I know right now with the shutdown, but in some ways seeing the TKTS booth there now, and even though the Times Square is a, a bit shut down, to see it there, it, for me, it stand, stands as a symbol of we will be back. <laughs> in some ways, more so than the the closed theaters on the side streets, because that kind of depresses me when I look down up and down the side streets and see mm -hmm. just the darkness. But there's something about the TKTS booth right there in the middle of Times Square that's still standing. People are still sitting on those steps, and I mean, it's one of the places that you can kind of safely socially distance in the summer, and 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 you know, just with your masks and have your little space. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, when I shot my bit for um, the Stand for Change video, it was one of the first warm nights of, um, that we had this year in 2021. And Times Square was packed and people were all up and down those steps. And, you know, people were masked for the most part. Mm -hmm. But it was just like the center of the beginning of the returns of life to there. So TKTS is, has, I mean, was always a lifeline for me. And I'll yeah. even admit that before I could like afford Broadway tickets, which I, it took a long time. Mm -hmm. um, even like, you know, when I first got Carousel, before I got my first couple paychecks, I still couldn't afford Broadway tickets. We would second act it, which you can't do anymore. But in those days, if somebody walked out of a show or you could maybe pick up a torn ticket or something during it, stand around during intermission, <laughs> Kind of walk back in with people and just look for an empty seat and sit down. Can't do that so much anymore because it's all scanned and stuff. But in my day, <laughs> in my day too, the second acting it. You could second act it, but then TK, you know, TDF, thank God, and TKTS. So you could do the whole show and, yeah. and it'd be legal. <laughs> right. Be legal and impossible for those us broke actors who really want to get out of it. Exactly. So the theater lovers. Yep. Okay. Uh, is it my turn to ask? I think so. How have you been staying creative during the pandemic, Audra? We we done birthed an organization. I mean, I mean, yeah. It, yeah. Every, every night. Yeah, that's that's been it. And every every Sunday night, at least, you know, but more often than not, every day of the week, many hours during the day, and um, it's everything else has been for me just trying to take care of the toddler at home. So between the toddler at home, a lot of Zoom performances and Black Theater United, that's what's that's what my life has been. How about you? Pretty much the same. I have Zoom performances, a lot of um Zoom readings. We did the we both of us did the Seth concert series. Yep. We both did the Seth concert series. Actually a few of us Black Theater United founding members did the Seth concert series. Um starting to dip in a little bit back a little bit in uh you know a little bit of television. Um getting ready for theater, hopefully when it comes back in the fall, looking forward to that. But yeah, Black Theater United, I would have to say, um, has, has, it, it's just, it's just so, it's all, I'm so inspired with the work that we're doing and um, how much, how, much, how many people are coming to us 
for advice, like our, our members, so some of the members that join our site when they need support in somewhere and they ask us really, really awesome questions and we're able to lend advice. I never thought I'd be in that position where I love giving advice. I've become my mother and my aunties. <laughs> now I have a lot to say. I have so much advice to give and I'm <laughs> so sure of my wisdom now. So. <laughs> So I love to get these questions from people and 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 point people in good directions and give it and give them good advice. So um, yeah, that's how I'm pretty much staying creative. And I have to say, if there is a silver lining um, to come out of this quarantine time and this horrific pandemic that we've all been suffering through, is I will have to say that it's it's brought Black Theater United founding members together, and not only are our, our everyone in this organization, my friend, it's also nice, and my colleague, it's nice to see that we're all um, equally together on the, on with this desire to, to stand for a change and to come together and, and, and make long, long lasting substantive change for our future in theater when it comes back. So that's a silver lining for me. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. In addition to being Tony winning performers, you're both proud moms in life and on social media. <laughs> Did that say loud moms? Cause we're loud moms too. We're proud and loud moms in life and on social media. Mm -hmm. How do you hope Black Theater United and other anti-racist initiatives impact our children's future? Well, I'm hopeful that the work that we're doing right now is just the, it's just the tip of the iceberg. I hope that um, with, with the voice of the generations uh, to come, one thing I will say, for instance, my generation, which is Generation X, I'm told, um, we're right after the baby boomers, so um, we have more of a voice than our than the generations before us. But I believe the generation now that's out there speaking and protesting in the streets, this generation, I think, is the generation that's going to really, really, really insist on the change that we need in in our country and in society. And I'm excited about what they're doing, and so um, being able to provide a platform that we hope will last for generations and generations and generations because we have we have big plans for Black Theater United. We're hoping it to be around for years to come. But I believe this generation is 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 going to be the most vocal generation that will really, really lock down the change that we need for the future. So. Yeah, no, I I Lashance and I have quite a few times, you know, beta tested some of our ideas and whatnot on our children. Um, not so much Sally, my four-year-old, but our, <laughs> you know, between Zaya, Celia, and, and Zoe, our older daughters, mm -hmm. um, because this is a very brave, outspoken, um, relentless generation that's coming behind us. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that they are, they are so motivated and, um, they, uh, in, in a lot of ways, they, they don't have the tolerance for injustices that we not necessarily had, but ne but had to, had to sort of navigate yeah. navigate mm -hmm. in a way that this the generation coming up behind us is like, oh, no, sir, it's just not going to be like that. Okay. And I, I admire that. And um, um, they're unapologetic mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and they insist on things being different. And so uh, I'm, I'm very, very uh, proud of this generation coming up behind us. And my hope is that Black Theater United and other organizations that are out you know, with anti-racist initiatives and, and, and um, doing what we can to dismantle system, systemic racism and you know, misogyny and all of it mm -hmm. uh, within our community and our, and our society, um, I hope that Black Theater United becomes an organization that is out there doing great sort of philanthropic and charitable things and mentoring and, and scholarships and whatnot, but that by the time, like say Sally is a, a grown woman, that their work will be needed, but not, necess not necessary. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a more equitable yes. uh, world so uh -huh. that th they won't have to fight these battles anymore. And it can just be a you know place to go to fellowship and 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 continue to keep the pipeline open and all that, but that um, the work will have been done, um, right? Or, or or on its way to being done. And that's that's a probably a pie in the sky dream. But um, if any 
body can help to get that done and, and get it across the finish line, I believe it is this next generation coming. I agree through. completely. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. I love the way you said um, they're unapologetic because yes. they are. They they are done with accommodating the the, the dominant culture. They're done with that. Yeah. They're done. Yeah. They're like, nope. You will not call me this. This is this is who I am. You will not define for me who I am. You will not speak my truth. I will speak it, and you will accept that. Yeah. And, you know, as a mom of, of growing teenagers, I can't. I have to say, there was a couple times when I was like, "Well, wait a minute." In my day, you know, <laughs> I had a couple of those moments. But you know, there's no arguing with logic. You know, yeah. they make perfect sense. The arguments are so clear, and I'm like, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate the. Yeah taught by this generation. I appreciate really what taught. they're saying and I appreciate their 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 commitment to insisting on on um everyone being treated equal and, and and things that I didn't even consider were such a big deal. My daughters would point out, Mom, that is a big deal. You know, certain things, because growing up in the industry when I was coming up, there were very few idols that I could look up to in musical theater. You know, there were very few. So it's you know, it is, that's way it's, that's just the way it is. And they're like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. That's right. It doesn't have to be that way. It shouldn't we, be. All, we can all be that. We can all share. We can have black writers, black shows, black plays, telling black stories that will only increase our communal culture. It's not just, you know, for uh, black audiences, it's for everyone. And exactly. It's part of our society. So, and not only black, all of the, yeah. you know, BIPOC. Everyone in the BIPOC community, you know, all the all the variety of things that we're doing in all the different organizations, to your point about there are so many great organizations that are out right now that are focusing on um, all the different things that, that need to be focused on within the theater community in different ways. You know, there's the, the Muse, which is the uh, musicians that have come together to create this organization to speak about um, racism within, within music mm-hmm. in the theater. And you would never think about that. But... Um, yeah, there's so many great organizations out there. Everybody's doing the work. Everyone's doing the work. Well, thank you so much, TDF fans, for um, listening to us run our mouths. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to TDF for uh, letting us take this time and, and be a part of this uh, this conversation. It's always a joy. And I will probably be on the phone with LaShawn's about 16 more times before the evening is out. But it was oh. nice to... Do it here. I do it here. Thank you so much for having us. And um, it was so great to be a part of this conversation. So thank thank you. you. Stay safe, everybody. Yep.